Hello party people! Today I want to talk about a book that I finished for my Russian book club and that book is The Mastery Margarita. I was a little intimidated by this book because it is a Russian classic, but that's why I drink book clubs. It's fun to do scary things with friends. The book itself is as fun to read as Alice in Wonderland and it's also as confusing. The two books have a lot of similarities. The first and most obvious one is that they have a super playful, nonsensical tone. Second, they both use fantastical characters and settings to disguise jokes about society's elite and hypocrisies of their respective cultures. And third, maybe most importantly, they both have talking cats. The structure of the book is a little weird. There are three stories that eventually connect, but it takes a while to see how they're related. This book is about a man called The Master. The Master is trying to publish a alternative telling about the execution of Jesus Christ from the perspective of his executor, Pontius Pilate. But the Stalin-appointed media gatekeepers not only reject his manuscript, they openly mock him. This causes the master to have a mental breakdown and he burns all of his notes, anything he's typed, everything related to this manuscript. The book is supernaturally resurrected when his estranged lover makes a deal with Satan in order to reunite with her lover, the master, and also recover the book. As I was reading this, one of the questions that emerged for me was what exactly was removed by the Soviet censors? And I learned that the 1966 version, the redacted version, is on average about like 40 or 50 pages shorter than modern versions that you can buy today. The paragraphs describing the Moscow housing crisis, descriptions of female nudity, and descriptions of people disappearing or being afraid of disappearing were all deleted. But the difference between the versions doesn't stop at what was removed by the censors. This book is the result of a very long game of telephone. It's a masterpiece with eight canonical versions. It was assembled by a dozen people over the course of six decades. And all of these people were trying to collage together a comprehensible narrative from the handwritten journals and diaries of a dead man. And I think that's part of the continued fascination with this book. We'll never have the authoritative version that Bulgakov himself would have published. And that's a lot like the Pontius Pilate plot of this book. In my reality, religious stories are passed down, reinterpreted, translated, and ultimately transformed by thousands of people. And much like the Master and Margarita, we'll probably never have an authoritative version of what those writers intended when they wrote their religious texts. Which, for someone like me, is just kind of a fun, interesting thought to sit with. So I'm glad I read it, but I know that the reason it was so fun for me was because I got to study it with friends. If you're doing this on your own, definitely get an annotated version of it, especially if you don't have that much fluency with Russian history or with Faust. There are a lot of Faust references in here that I didn't, I didn't understand. I do have an art update. For those of you who don't know, I have a no buy art supply challenge. I can't buy new hobby supplies until I use up the stuff that I already own. And so with this one, I went through two fountain pen ink cartridges. Over and over again, I'm shocked at how long and durable my art supplies are. Like, I thought this was gonna be four or five pens, only two. I went into this illustration thinking that it would be really fun to have really tight, dense clusters of mushrooms that were just like packed together. And I was a little surprised to see that the area that I thought would be the strongest, like this zone right here, uh, to me is maybe the weakest part of this. And for me, I think that's because I just don't have enough like line variation or enough of the background coming through to help these mushrooms have distinctive shapes. This side I think is much more interesting and stronger because um, enough of the background comes through that each mushroom is pretty easy to identify and you can also see like the way the stems intertwine with each other creates a lot of visual interest. 
I think that does it for this week. If you made it this far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.